times, yeah, about time we stop pretending Can you hear me? Oh, there I am. Sorry, I didn't mean to scream in your ear. Okay. <laughs> I was listening to see if uh, Oliver, um, stage center stage here, trying to see if Oliver is uh, being quiet. It seems like he did quiet down. So I want to welcome you guys to uh, my little chat about my canine sensory garden. And this is going to be about garden structures and um, accessories. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, accessories, they kind of make your life as a dog owner a little bit easier. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into it and take a look at what all uh, we can do to make our backyards a little bit more interesting for our dogs. So let me see if maybe I can do this. Nope, that's not going to work for me. Okay, well, and that doesn't work either. <laughs> All right, hold on one second and let me, I'm going to share screen. And uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and I will answer them as soon as I get back. I like to use Canva for my presentations, but for some reason it doesn't seem to get along very well with Restream or YouTube. Maybe I should check my Restream. Um, anyway, so let's hop on over there and take a look at what we got for us tonight. Okay, so... Let's go back, of course. All right, so tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about structures that you can put in your dog's sensory garden. These are things that they can uh, play on and dogs really like to stand up high and kind of, they like to look out and um, play watch doggy. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go over here Maybe not. Okay, so um, this is for your digging breeds. These are going to be like your terriers and dachshunds. They really like to dig. So this is a little digging pit that someone has put together. And what they've done is they've gone ahead and they've put toys, um, some of the dog's toys, and there's a little snack in there and a ball. It looks like maybe some bully sticks to get your dog, their dog interested in the digging pit and so kind of teach them and help them figure out what it's for. And uh, it's a good idea if you can to put a lid on um, your digging pit just, because, just so the uh, 
neighbor cats aren't using the digging pit as well. Another um, option that we have is these, um, what that is, is it's a baby's like little playpen with some of those um, ball pit balls. And that's another thing that you can use, especially it's something that you can use in the winter time and, you know, kind of give your dog something to do. And the same thing with this, you can put a couple of treats in there um, and let them go to town. Something else that I've seen is for like really small dogs, like puppies, I've seen people put the ping pong balls in a baby pool. And um, that's also a good thing to desensitize your dog to different noises so they don't get so freaked out when there's different noises. And another thing, these are what's called cavalettis. Usually you see them in the riding or horseback riding, like the dressage arena. That's usually where you see these. Um, but these are something also that I have a cavaletti, like the one there on the right, the one that looks like a little ladder. That's something easy that I could build for my dog myself out of PVC and plumbing pieces. Um, and it's something that I can like, I have a, a place where I hang it on my, you know, garage wall and I can take that out. That's something that I walk along my dog along the side with on the side and it kind of gets them to focus. They have to walk a little bit slower and they have to focus on the ladder. So that's um, something to kind of stimulate their brains as well. And then on the left here, I have a, um, these are some indoor cavalettis that someone has made that, you know, it's some, again, it's something else that you can use in the winter months. And these are just ch uh, children's little pylons and some, you know, some plain old sticks. You can just, you can get like, if you have any dowel rods or something like that around the house, you can just get creative. There's a lot of different things that you can do to have fun with your dog in the, um, in the backyard in the winter too. All right. Another thing is platforms. These are for, once again, for your dog to kind of do um, guard doggy and kind of look out over your yard. Now this one, this is something that I wanted to show you guys. It's actually um, a USDA uh, platform. It's to their specifications. And um, this is something that the USDA in one of their, in their um, obedience competitions that they use to demonstrate a stay. So this is something that you can use for training. And then I also really like how on the bottom, of course, the top is probably going to be really heavy, but on the bottom, that's made out of all PVC. So that's something that you can pick up and you can move to, um, for mowing. So I like a lot of um, things that I can move around my yard as a newbie. And another thing that you can do is you can add a tunnel to your platform. Now this platform, it's, you know, it's a ways, it's got two platforms that kind of like a step and then it has a little ramp and then someone it looks like they got maybe some culvert. Uh, can't think of the word now. Tunneling. Oh, got the word tunnel there. And these are some, some of the things that you can do where you can add like little trails for your dogs. You know, even if it's <clears throat> like, if you put in a raised bed, you can maybe kind of scoop back where you are planting, you know, shrubbery or plants or anything like that. And then that way your dog can, you know, sniff around it. And then the dog here on the right, he's kind of got like his own little trail going on. And it's, um, that's something that you can do. I wouldn't even get that, you know, I wouldn't even go over the top like that one and put in rocks or flagstone, whatever that is. That's something that you could just do. Like if there's kind of, you know, some dogs, they run back and forth in the same place. 
and there's, you know, where the grass won't grow anymore. I mean, that's something that you can just put flowers around, make it look a little bit nicer, kind of block if your dog um, fence fights. That's something, you know, where you can put in plants and you can block your dog's view or, you know, make it less easy for them to see the neighbor dog, you know, whichever dog they're fence fighting with. Can this do this? Did I get through all these? I must have. <laughs> oh boy, I jumped all the way to the back. I don't know how I did that. Sorry guys. Okay. All right, there we go. So here's something that someone has done is they have gotten some tires and they've painted them. They've put some one, the one there on the left, they just put in, <clears throat> they just put in some stone to make it a little bit more level for their dog to stand on. The one here on the right, it looks like they got um, somewhere they got, you know, a wood top. I'm wondering if maybe they just went and they bought, um, the smaller tabletops that you can get, like for the end tables, you can get those at Lowe's or Home Depot. Now here on the right, this is someone that I am going to guess <laughs> that they do quite a bit of um, competitive uh, work where they've got, you know, they've got a sway bridge in there. And then these blue barrels, they are pretty easy to come by. Um, and they've just cut, you know, one side of it off. And that makes a, you know, an interesting place for their dog to walk through. And it's also a good way of kind of recycling. Okay, so this is something similar, but it's made for little bitty puppies. Someone's made like a little bridge. And then it looks like they've got five gallon buckets under there that they've cut the bottom off of. So their dog... Um, or their puppy can go through those. That would be something great for small dogs for like, you know, just like your little toy breeds. That would be a great addition to um, do for them. And then this, I really like this one. It looks like they've gotten a steel drum and then they've added like a little dog walk and um, then it's also offers the dog shade. So it's kind of like a, almost like a three in one because then the dog some, has some place um, shady to sit and they've got a little tunnel to go through and then the little um, ramp to go up and down. Okay, here is another uh, thing and um, I've actually been able to come by these. My husband is um, by trade, he's an electrician, but he is um, a, what is it? A, um, sorry, electrical contractor. All he does is uh, commercial construction. So I was very fortunate in that we were able to get a hold of one of these large wire spools relatively easily. Um, and then <clears throat> so here on the right, once again, someone has, it looks as though they've just wrapped the um, the top of the spools because a lot of times they have a hole in them. So they've wrapped it with uh, AstroTurf to make it someplace stable for the do do their dogs to stand and they're not, you know, falling into the little holes and twisting ankles or hurting um, any kind of tendons or anything like that. And I wouldn't even, I don't know if I would either, even bother painting it. I would probably just put like some kind of weather protection stuff on it. It doesn't need to be painted all pretty. <laughs> the one on the left, I really like this. If you look closely, someone has, they just put in some, um, I think those are four by four posts. And if you look closely, they just have a pallet up there and they put a piece of wood on top. I mean, that's a like super easy peasy, um, you know, platform to make. It's, <laughs> that's really very simple. And then they've got some stringers on the back. And what stringers are, that's something that you can get um, 
in the uh, back in like where they have the wood and the millwork se section, you can get, it looks like this one, they've got maybe a four string of steps and they already have little pieces of wood in there. And then you just slide the pieces of wood in for the steps. So that's pretty easy. And they've got a little ramp there with some, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, some strips of wood there to make it a little bit, oh, furring strips. That's what it is. And furring strips are something that are usually used when, um, when people, when you're putting in a window, if you ever notice the people that are putting in the window, they'll kind of um, use these little pieces of wood to kind of move the window up and down so they make sure that they have it in just the right place. So that's what furring strips are. Again, that's going to be in your millwork section. And then here are some logs and um, what can be really good about giving your dog logs to climb on is it's going to really, um, it's going to kind of wear down their nails a little bit more. So it's going to be less drama for um, trim, trimming nails. I have one of my dogs, he is super dramatic and he has to take, I have to give him some Acer and, um, I have to take him to a specific groomer. She has to put a muzzle on him. She has to sit down on the floor with him like he's a little baby. And it just ends up being a big performance. Um, but some of these logs, giving those to, for your dog to stand on, that's going to wear down their nails a little bit, um, along with walks and cement and blacktop, whatever you're walking on. That is, it's going to help wear down those nails and you won't have to take them to the groomer or trim their nails yourself as much. And then here's a few basset, a couple of basset hounds and they're just enjoying their little, they've got a very fancy schmancy platform. And um, I like the ledge around or the lip that is around the, um, top of the platform, especially because my particular breed that I favor, which is cattle dogs, all of them, they love to roll around and sometimes they'll even sleep on their backs. So that's something that I really like because I would be worried about my dog um, rolling off the side of one of the platforms. And again, they have a little ramp and they've put across strips to give their dog a little bit more traction. And then this is a sway bridge. This kind of puts a, you know, different spin on a, um, there's a thing that's called a dog walk that they use in agility competitions where it's just a big bridge that the dog has to go up. Now this one, it's a, again, it's a sway bridge. It's a little bit more stable, but it's, again, it's going to make your dog focus and use their minds. And here's something else that it's a movable item and um, you can put wheels on the, on the bottoms of it and um, just make, it's called an A-frame is what this is. And <clears throat> Again, it's got the strips. You can also put rubberized paint on it to give, or even um, you can add sand to paint. Or there's also, um, I'm trying to think, there's also, there's all, a few different things. I think there's also different things that you can add to paint. You would have to kind of look that up, but they do have rubberized paint that you can put on those to give your dog a good grip. And then there's also the strips to um, stabilize them. Now, every sensory garden, it needs a shady place. So on the right, I've just put, you know, that's it's just a pretty place to lay. Um, maybe some cushions. You can, you know, save your dogs, um, maybe old towels or something like that. And it's not going to be something that you're going to leave out in the yard, you know, day after day. So, you know, maybe some old ratty um, blankets. Um, you're going to use that to give your dog someplace nice and then put it under some trees. 
and just someplace nice and shady to um, hang out. Now here on the left, this is something um, covering it. It's called a sail shade. And if you have a smaller garden or, you know, ha have a few trees that you can put this between, that's also another, I would call this like a permanent, you know, addition that you would just maybe take down in the winter to give your dog a little bit of shade. And there's also some children's play toys, like with the little slide and, and again, another platform. Um, little kids and dogs alike <laughs> like those little platforms. And uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I got fortunate, I got very lucky, and I found one of those slides that someone had put out in their trash. So I went trash picking and uh, got my dogs a little slide. Um, something else that you can add, and this can be very complex or it can be very simple, is um, water features. This first dog on the left, he's kind of, you know, he's got um, like a little planter with some water. Maybe it's a bird feeder. And there are some plants that are growing in it. You know, something simple like that. And then here's a whole fancy schmancy dog pool that someone put in for, for their dogs. And it, uh, it looks like it's an outright pool. So it's pretty darn deep and it's got a platform for the dogs to get in and out. And it even looks like it has maybe a bubbler or um, something for to aerate the water. So it's not stagnant, so it doesn't get stagnant. And then here's something else that um, I really like as well. Because it's foldable. It's something that you can fold up and you can put it away in the winter. I'm all about folding things up and saving space. So this is something else that you could put out, you know, especially big furry dogs like this, they are going to love this. And then here's a plain old baby pool here on the left. Now this on the right is someone who got really super creative with their dogs, um, you know, waiting pool and that it looks like it has like a filter. This is a, um, it's a stock tank, which this is something that you're going to look for at Rural King or Tractor Supply. And what stock tanks are is usually it's for watering um, large animals like uh, your cattle and your horses. Now, some of your bully breeds, they really like to tug on stuff. And this is something that's called a spring pole. And it's just basically, it's just a big pole. And um, you can go online and you can get, you know, different um, sets, you know, to set that up. And, um, you know, it's going to have, you know, the bolt and everything. But a lot of your bully breeds really really like to tug on stuff so here this is something called a spring pole then here's something else for a little bit of a smaller dog that somebody just you can strap it around your tree again this is something else you can find on amazon and then jumps some dogs just naturally like to jump like my dog gypsy she if there's something to jump over she's gonna jump over it I've tried taking her in obedience rings and she will just take off and just jump over the jump. Why? Because it's there. Now, this is someone who has a very smart little girl. She has set up some jumps with some of the folding chairs. Um, so she set those up in her backyard with folding chairs that she had around the house. Now we're back to the trails. <laughs> so this one, this is a simple trail, you know, maybe a, it looks like it could be maybe a path that somebody already had that was pre-existing and they added some dog safe plants to it. And here's the one that I was also showing you guys a little bit earlier. 
So again, you can move some plants back and give your dog a little um, trail to run around and sniff. Or if it's a larger dog, again, you can um, maybe make a little trail, but it doesn't have to be so fancy. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. And that didn't work. Hold on. Okay. Wanted to see if anybody has any questions. Thank you so much for being here, Frosty. So, yeah, a baby pool. Um, baby pools are great. I have uh, baby pools as well. The only thing is, is I'm not sure. My baby pool's about five, maybe six years old. Um, starting to get a little bit worn out. I think it might make it one more summer, but I'm not sure how to throw it away after that. Oh, I'm glad you just got, oh, you got home from work. That's right. You told me that working on Sunday is rough. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to talk about accessories. Hold on. I'm listening for Oliver. Okay. Oh. Okay. I think he's being quiet. So, oh, your baby pull broke. Did you see the foldable ones that I put on there? Um, yeah, there's the foldable ones. And then at the end of the summer, a lot, you can get the, um, some of the stock tanks. They'll go on sale at Tractor Supply. Trying to see if he's being quiet. Oh, yes, you saw the red one. Well, there you go. Roulette, you know. That might get, uh, last you for through the first year with um, blue. Okay, so we're going to go over the next one. Accessories. You guys are probably going to laugh, but to me, these are accessories, and I think they're pretty awesome. So, anyway, let's go ahead. We're going to go over here, and we're going to do share screen. Oh, hold on. Let's go over here to accessories. So these are accessories for your sensory garden to make it all the more um, awesome. <laughs> all right. Sometimes um, some dogs, they will like, these are convex mirrors that you can get re relatively easily. Uh, you can get these at your home improvement stores near you, like Home Depot and the like. And um, something you can put in permanently and your dog can just take a look at themselves and get an opportunity to see. They think you're seeing other doggies, but they're just looking at themselves. Okay, so here are some other accessories. Um, the fountains. Like if you can get something that's solar and maybe put a, in an inexpensive bird feeder, it's going to, there's going to be the sound of the water as well as the sound, you know, if there's any little birds that maybe come by that are maybe interested. And then um, also these bamboo wind chimes, these can also be very um, relaxing and it's a different kind of sound for your dog than just the plain old backyard. Oh, it did it again. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I'm not too hot at this. We'll get it. Okay, so there's the mirrors. And then another thing to do if... Um, you can train. Dogs can be trained to go potty in one place. And you can do that with either you can put in AstroTurf or also you can kind of just section someplace off for them to go potty. Because uh, some people, they get, their grass will be, get burnt from the uric acid in dog urine. There's also products that you can put on your lawn to uh, help with the uric acid as well. 
Oh, and I went all the way to the end again. What did I do? I don't know what I did. I did it again, though. Whoops. Okay. All right. What are we doing here? All right. So there's the mirrors. And the pee, pee place. These are, and I want one of these so bad. Uh, these are called doggy doolies. And pretty much it's something that you're going to dig down into the ground. It's like a little, um, it's a septic tank for your dog. So you're going to put waste, their waste in there. And a couple times a year, you'll uh, dump in some um microbes and bacteria in there to break down their waste and then <clears throat> it can go ahead it's going to rinse through um and become a little kind of become a part of the groundwater but it's just pretty much a septic tank for your dog and then here are some other ways of um using waste um, another way to manage your dog's waste are the smaller trash cans and the one on the right, that's something that I have right now, but it fills up pretty fast <laughs> with three dogs. Oops, it's not cooperating. Now here is another kind of doggy dually. It's a DIY doggy dually. Um, it doesn't look a whole lot less expensive, but this is something else that someone has created out of one of those blue barrels and they just drill holes in it and they go ahead and they put in waste that way and through the big top. Scenting. Dogs love to smell stuff and you can get different kinds of kits from the AKC um, they sell scent kits as well as Learberg. And as you can see here, these are just, and I put up on the top, very top right, are um, these little tins that you can get on Amazon. And you can just put small holes in those um, to kind of release the scent. And then there are, if you look down in the bot at the bottom photo, those are just pretty much just cotton swabs that are cut in half. And then it looks like they use, um, what is it? Birch, clove, and anise are the scents that they usually use for scenting. Those are something that you can get on Amazon relatively inexpensively. You don't need um, everything quite this fancy. I would recommend getting some of the, uh, you know, long tweezers, just so that you're not getting your scent on the cotton swab as well. So there's that. There's an inexpensive way of working, of doing that. And this is a um, something that's usually used in search and rescue work in, up here on the left, and this is called a scent stick. And again, it's made out of just uh, PVC piping and you just get the end caps, drill some holes through it. And there you go. You got a scent stick and they've got some cotton swabs here. And this is something else. Great tide in your yard. Over here on the right, this is something, one of the um, fancy schmancy uh, kind of scenting uh I'm trying to think of the word. It's like a platform um, for some of the more uh, complicated search and rescue work. And then there's something that is super complicated where basically this is something like they would use for drug detection dogs. And they have a whole selection of different tubes to choose from and the trainers, they put the, uh, they will put, you know, the smell of the drug in just one of those tubes and then the dog has to find it. So that's how they do some of that work. 
And here's another really super simple way of doing scent work is if you have a few, uh, what is it, uh, tubs around, um, oh boy, storage tubs around. This is something, you can use this for scent work um, and have three different tubs and then your dog has to figure out, you know, which swab is in that tub. Um, and that's something you would kind of um, give them a command to learn how to do. This is also um, this is also a good activity for your dog to do just for dinner or breakfast. Just put some food there and make them get their you know kind of hunt out their food and get it out of you know a tub like this. You know, for a dog to put their head through something or down into something. That's something that takes a certain amount of confidence. So this is a confidence building skill as well. And then here's another variation on the scent, um, you know, uh, accessories that you can add to your yard. So this here is a log that someone has, you know, looks like maybe they used a hole saw and dug out, you know, dug some of the, um, it's been a, uh, it's been dug out. And then, um, you know, you can put little treats in there or, you know, something like that. I'm going to need to put you guys on hold for just one second because Oliver is being demanding. So I will be right back. Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much for your patience. So anyway, this is a log that someone has set up and you can even kind of add this as a part of the atmosphere of your backyard. They've used a hole saw to, sorry, I'm out of breath, to drill some holes in the log and kind of dug them out. You can put little treats in there, or again, the different, the anise or clove uh, scents in there as well. I don't know if I talked about this, the ladder, I think I already did. So we're gonna skip by it, that's a Cavaletti. And then something that they, you can add to your dog's sites is a bird feeder. Um, of course, if your dog is the type to bark at, the bir at birds a whole lot, then this isn't something that you're going to put in your yard because it's not very nice to the birds. And then here we go. The, uh, we're back to the sounds as far as the wind chimes and the solar power, uh, what do you call it, the water thing to kind of give a little bit of an extra sound to your dog. Something else, these are things that are also stimulating. Heck, you could even make, you know, a shorter water bowl and just make it into a water bowl 
they might like that. Just some fresh water to drink. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. So, anyway, um, I was coming to see if anybody have any questions. Um, let me hop over and see what kind of... It would be someplace that is for livestock or for farmers. Let me take a look. Let me hop over real quick. I hope I can hop over real quick. Oh, hold on. Whoop. Let me see what they have up by you, Frosty. Here we go. What's the equivalent? Oh, okay. So it's Canadian Farm Supply. That is something that is the equivalent of tractor supply that is in Canada. So um, it looks like you're in the, in the shower, Frosty. <laughs> so I'm probably going to wrap it up. Um, so if you have any other questions, my email is in the about section. And I look forward to talking to you guys another time. And um, we're just going to, I'm kind of going to be jumping around to try to figure out when folks have time to talk in these lives. So I want everybody to have a good evening and thank you so much. Even if you catch this on the replay, thank you so much for your time and um, kind of thinking about more things that we can do for our dogs um, because just laying on the couch and can get pretty boring. So everybody have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.